Clippers to the lead. The talk of a bubble in Silicon Valley is starting to gain steam again. And some of the most respected voices in venture capital are sounding the alarm. Bill Gurley, Fred Wilson, Mark Andreessen, just a few big names warning. Startups are burning through way too much cash as they get round after round of funding, leaving many with multi-billion dollar valuations. Andreessen recently tweeted, when the market turns, and it will turn, we will find out what has been swimming without trunks on. Many high burn rate companies will vaporize. And Andreessen is not stopping tweeting up a storm on this issue just in the last few minutes. Meantime, Fred Wilson of Union Square Ventures wrote on his blog, valuations can be fixed. You can do a down round or three or four flat ones until you get the price right. But burn rates are exactly that. Burning cash, losing money, emphasis on the losing. So are they right? Joining me now are editor-at-large Corey Johnson, Draper Fisher Jervison partner Josh Stein, and in San Diego, our Bloomberg contributing editor and SK Ventures general partner Paul Kudrowski. Paul, do you agree? It's math. It's kind of hard to disagree with math. I mean, high burn rate companies do have a bad tendency to go boom. And in particular, whenever the market turns, they're going to be vaporized. I, I, I just separate the conversation about high burn rate companies from the existence of a bubble because, you know, high burn rate companies are a perennial problem. Bubbles kind of come and go. Josh, what do you think? Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, I think when people are talking about a bubble, they're usually focused on valuation. Um, I think what Mark and what um, uh, Bill Gurley were focused on is burn rate. And I think that's something that in 30 years we've been doing venture capital, um, one thing we've seen is that a high burn rate can really impact companies' ability to execute. So it's something we try and guide them towards. Um, I think whether or not people's burn rates are too high on average right now is something we could debate. Some of the things they're burning money on, Mark Andreessen says, lots of people, big shiny office, high expense base, fake, we've made it, feeling removes pressure to deliver real results. I mean, you do see a lot of startups moving into these beautiful new yeah. offices, downtown San Francisco, like the most expensive place in the country right now. Well, it's a beautiful place to be, obviously. Right, when um, they but also I, want to make I, it look like it's beautiful, like they have a great place to work. Yeah, I think they have a fair point. I mean, I'd say uh, a startup is like driving a car. If you're burning a lot of money, you're going really, really fast. And sometimes you want to go really fast when you have a great opportunity ahead of you. The problem is when you're going fast, it's hard to adjust quickly. So you have less time to react and more risk of a crash if you have to turn the wheel quickly. I thought Mark had an interesting tweet. Uh, one of one of his, his many, I love his tweets because they're often ridiculous. Um, but I, but the, the notion that uh, it's, it's, it gives a, an entrepreneur the feeling of success. Hey, we've made it because we spent this venture capital money on rent. When in fact the winner, I mean, I remember the dot-com bubble when there were so many landlords around here who loved the dot-com bubble because they had tenants in there for a little while who were paying them 90, 100 bucks a month. And they kept that money long after those companies were out of business. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, you, you've got to build a company, right? You've got to focus on building a real company and not get distracted by that. That said, high burn rates themselves, I don't think are necessarily indicative of a problem. Facebook burned 130 million bucks in 2007. Two years later, they had a profit of 260 million dollars. But that was the math that Paul was talking about. There was a trajectory there where you could see it, and they also had points at which they could have pulled back that spending. They were clearly spending towards towards profitability, towards free cash flow, though they weren't there yet. Let me ask you, Paul, because, you know, obviously there's another side of the story. We're hearing from venture capitalists, high valuations aren't great for venture capitalists. Is there another side to this story? Oh, sure. You know, you're always going to hear from people who wish other people would stop spending so much money because, you know, in, uh, as an investor, I, I, I kind of like capital scarcity, right? I mean, I don't want people to be out there putting so much money in companies because, in part, you'd like to see capital be at least a little bit scarcer. That's good for, it's good for returns, you know, as an investor. So you have to always be careful reading between, and read between the lines when people who benefit from having capital be scarce recommend that capital be scarce. Having said that, you know, there is this kind of temptation out there, right? now to you know confuse a financing event having raised a lot of money with a customer event having gotten a lot of customers and the two have you know very little to do with each other certainly not in the short run and you know more companies have blown up on that point than on anything else I can think of more tweets from Andreessen just in the last few minutes over invest escalate <laughs> burn risk down round vaporize when market turns or under invest starve growth don't win market implode vaporize implode is this a reality for some of these companies, Josh? It's a conundrum, right? I mean, this is the trick, and this is why we work with entrepreneurs over long periods of time to help them navigate exactly that question. 
I don't think there's a right answer that fits everybody. It's going to be specific to each company, but that's the trick. I do think that this, this talk of bubble is generally overblown as relates so to burn no rates. bubble. Well, most of the companies that have very high burn rates also have very high revenue. So if you went back to the dot com bubble, that wasn't the case. You had companies with two or three million dollars in revenue going public and burning fish 100 million bucks. And ice sculptures. I think we see a little bit less of that right now. Maybe not so much the fish tanks. But I, I think that, you know, the, the other issue here, though, is that, uh, and, and it, it, the venture capitalists, you, I'm going to blame you. <laughs> you guys see a binary result. No, no, blame this thing's going to be me. huge. Or I'll blame Paul. I usually blame him. I just thought I'd give him a break for a minute, but that, that minute's over. You guys, Paul, you guys, you guys want a binary result. This thing's going to be huge or it's going to be a zero. When I think some of the entrepreneurs and some of the business ideas might actually like to have 10 years to figure out what it's going to be and might like a nice, modest success. They might like a single. I feel like a lot of venture capitalists are really pushing for only home runs. Is that fair? I, I think we do push hard. I don't think that's due to us. I think that's due to the technology markets. The technology markets are very asymmetric. It's winner take most. They move very quickly. Competition moves very fast. You have to invest aggressively, otherwise you're going to be left behind. So we do push companies hard, but we push them for that reason. Something else, Paul, uh, that Andreessen is talking about is that the yeah. founders, the young founders today, have only been around in an environment where money is easy to raise, where valuations are high, and that this will not last. Is the money going to dry up? Is there a bubble that is going to pop? You know, remember that old, sh that old show, Mystery Science Theater, uh, Theater 3000, where people just talk over a movie? I feel like we should just have a show where we just talk about Mark's tweets. Just do that for the day. <laughs> no, so, yeah, I totally <laughs> I totally agree. I mean, you know, this, this part of the problem is, is cultural and generational. There's a whole generation of young entrepreneurs who've never seen anything but this age of plenty, whether it's the money that comes to them almost for free once they're inside of a program like a Techstars or Accelerator, or what they see if they're in a hot space in the Bay Area or wherever else. And, you know, the thing we see about risk capital is it is intensely cyclical and it'll go away as fast as it arrived, or even faster, actually. And so, yes, they're going to be absolutely shocked at how quickly it disappears. And, you know, just, shame on them for not paying attention if it happens. He just did an old man. Paul just did the old man. These kids today, they don't know how good they got it. Um, I think. No, no, it, no Emily I, I just, started it. Emily started it. I, well, I want to. I, I never said you were old. He said that. Alan Greenspan. I would never. No, no, Alan no, Greenspan. No. That's all right. Yes, Paul. <laughs> what? Yeah. So Alan Greenspan said irrational exuberance. Of course, we give him all the credit for for that comment. After, of course, he money easing. He con continued after that. But he said that back in '96. You know, he said that four years before that bubble blew up. So it's one thing to spot a bubble. It's a whole other thing to spot the end of that. I, I think the whole young entrepreneurs haven't seen a, a crash is, is a little bit overstated. I mean, 2008, 2009 wasn't that long ago. It was yeah. not a picnic to raise money in 2009. I actually do think that the current generation of entrepreneurs have seen a down market. Um, I do, that said, I think it's very important to focus on building a business not on the vanity metrics, not on just the fundraising, not on image. So the big office is definitely a problem. But at least look for top line. But generally, you think Mark Andreessen is exaggerating. No, no, I don't think he's exaggerating. I think what he's saying, and I agree with him, is at the end of the day, in the long term, the only thing that matters is cash flow and profits. I think between here and there, there's a lot of other things you need to focus on as a company. And I think people need to make sure that as they're focusing on growing eyeballs or clicks or users, they also keep in mind, at some point, you have to make profit. All right, Josh Stein of Draper Fisher Jurvetson, Paul Kajowski, our Bloomberg contributing editor. Thank you both. The debate, I'm sure, will not stop, nor will Mark Andreessen's tweets.